Hey there, been a while. Today I'm going to show you how I created a rolling or dashing mechanic that accounts for slopes. Not stairs with complex collision like the ones that come with the third person template, but it'll do just fine with slopes. Today we're going to work in blueprints for the sake of simplicity. Let's do it. Before we begin, let me give you a brief overview of what we're doing today. The first step is to bind the input and its corresponding event to any key you like. No surprises there. Next, we want to check the input direction, aka WASD or the left thumbstick. Using this information, we set the roll direction and disable input, so that the player can't affect the roll. So here's a quick schematic for this point. Let me draw arrows to represent the directions we can roll to in a plane parallel to the ground. Step number four consists of checking the slope of the ground. If you don't do so, your character is gonna lose speed whenever it hits an upward slope. And the final step is to rotate the direction vector, the one we drew in step 3, to account for set slope. So let me draw another quick schematic. So let's say we were dashing forward and suddenly we hit a slope of alpha degrees from the ground. Instead of keeping the forward direction, we have to rotate this vector alpha degrees so that our velocity has now a vertical component and we don't lose speed during the roll. So there you go, that's the algorithm. If you want a step-by-step -step explanation, then stick around. Let's begin by creating a new project with a third-person template using blueprints. I'm gonna disable the starter content because we won't be using that today. Then I'm gonna add the Paragon Greystone character to the project because it has a couple more animations than the default mannequin. You can get it for free on the Unreal Marketplace. Once that's done, you should have a blueprint with this new character in your file browser. In order to get rid of the UE4 mannequin, let's go into the project settings and in the Maps and Modes tab, change the default spawn class to Greystone Player Character. Since we deleted the mannequin, go ahead and add a player star to your map. If done correctly, you should now spawn as the Greystone character. Okay, cool. So now let's modify the code. Go ahead and open your character's blueprint. Let's do the first step. So go into your project settings and under input, let's add a new action mapping. I'll call it roll and bind it to the left help key. Okay, inside our event graph, let's call the event corresponding to this input. And the first thing we wanna check is whether we're already rolling or not. Because if we are, then we mustn't do anything. For the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna go against my own advice and create a boolean variable called irrolling. And if you have no clue of why I said that, please check my previous video. There's useful information there, trust me. Anyway, if this variable is true, we do nothing and leave the path empty. And the other case is when it's false. In that case, we are rolling now, so we set the variable to true. All right, next step. If you remember, we have to check the input direction in order to determine which way are we rolling to. So I'm gonna create a new variable, which will be a vector, and I'll use it to set the initial direction of the row. Now we have to set this variable. To do so, I'm gonna connect a select vector node to its input, because there will be two cases. The first of them is when an input key is present, and the second one is when the player is not pressing any direction keys. In the latter, we're gonna roll forward, but you can choose to roll backwards if you like. The good news is that Unreal Engine already has a pretty easy way for us to tell what was the last input direction vector. This is done by means of this function called getLastMovementInputVector. Now I'm gonna check whether this vector is zero or not. If that's the case, then we know the player isn't pressing any of the movement keys. I'm gonna increase the tolerance of this function because we don't have to be that precise. Anyway, if the vector is non zero, then we pick it. Otherwise, we get the forward vector of this actor and choose that one instead. Now I'm gonna add that timeline. I'm actually not gonna add any variables to it because it'll serve as some sort of timer. So what I'm gonna do is open it 
and tweak its duration to a value that seems reasonable for a dash or row. Now what we want to do is play it from the start whenever we enter this sequence. Now we have to move our character, and the way we're going to do it is by using add actor world offset. Tick sweep so that you don't go through things. Finally, when our timeline is finished, all we have to do is set is rolling to false. All right, let's test it. Hmm. So my character is kind of rolling, but the distance is way too small. It's barely noticeable. What I'm going to do to fix this is multiply the roll direction vector by a scalar. And this will determine how far your character goes when it's rolling. Compile your blueprint and test it. And nice, it's working much better. All right, so the functionality is there, but it looks kind of wacky because we're magically sliding across the ground and that doesn't look that good. So to fix this, I'm going to add an animation. And unfortunately, this character doesn't come with a rolling animation. So we're going to improvise. By the end, it's going to look even wackier like you saw at the beginning. But hey, it's funny, so who cares? So let's open the anim blueprint for this character and modify the state machine. I'm gonna add a new state called roll, which can go to or come from the idle slash jog state. Now let me add a new variable called this rolling with a question mark to differentiate it from the one we already created. Open the transition rule. And all we have to do is a pretty simple check. We just have to check this new variable we just created. The opposite transition requires the opposite rule. So all you have to do is check this variable again and add a not node to it. Okay, cool. Our problem now is that nothing is setting this new is rolling variable. And in order to fix it, we're gonna have to go into the event graph. You can see that at the very beginning of this blueprint, we are trying to get the pawn owner. And we're going to use this variable and cast it to uh, the Greystone player character blueprint. Now you have to check all these series of events that come from update animation. So we can add our own events next. All right, nice. So now that we have done this cast, we can retrieve the original uh, is rolling variable and we use it to set this new is rolling with question mark variable. Now all we have to do is open the roll state and tell the blueprint what it has to play when we are in this state. So the closest thing to a roll this character has is the death animation. So we're gonna use that. So just type play death and add it to the output. And this is precisely what makes it even wackier. This is a death animation, not a roll animation. But hey, it works. So now if you compile and play, you should be making these cool backwards death rolls. Please notice that whenever you're rolling, you can press the input keys to affect the roll direction. This is not desirable, so let's fix it. Find the movement input section of your event graph, and we'll just add a branch before the add movement input nodes. Connect your rolling to the condition input of the branch, and in the false case, add the input, otherwise do nothing. This is exactly the same for the move right and move forward events. If you test it again, it should feel like the roles you're accustomed to in action games. And this is almost it. Please roll on all the slopes that this platform has, and you'll notice that your velocity is really inconsistent. This is a no-go for pretty much any kind of game. But hey, you already know how to fix it. I told you at the beginning of the video, remember? Let's do it. Let's go back to the Greystone character blueprint and add some code. 
So before we add the offset to the character, we have to check the slope of the ground, like I told you. And the way I'm going to do it is by tracing a line from the center of our character towards the ground, a uh, fixed distance. So add a line trace for objects node. And in object type, I'm going to make an array and look for world static objects. I'm going to tick ignore cell because we don't want to check collisions with ourselves. And I'm going to add a debug line so we, you can see what's happening here. The beginning of the trace is going to be at our actor's location. And I'm going to subtract in the Z component from this vector a fixed distance in order to check for these worst static objects. So, like I said before, we're tracing a vector from our center towards the ground. Alright, so if it wasn't already clear, the debug lines should make it so. Now I'm going to increase the Z distance I'm subtracting, because I'm noticing that some of the lines, when we're mid-air, aren't touching the ground. Okay, cool. So now the slope of the ground is hidden within this outheat variable. So right click it and expand it. The outheat normal vector is where this information is hidden. The way we set up things makes it so that this vector is always perpendicular to the ground we're standing on. All we have to do now is use get geo pitch from vector and we're interested in the pitch angle, which corresponds to the slope of the ground. Now this angle is measured so that whenever the ground has no slope, the angle is going to be 0 degrees. This is not quite right, and all you have to do is subtract this angle from 90 degrees. Now we have to make a rotator so that Unreal Engine knows how to rotate the roll direction vector. I'm going to use rotator from axis and angle. So we know the angle, but what is the axis? Well, it's not quite as simple as you might initially think. The reason for that is this vector changes from frame to frame. Let me once again draw a quick schematic to illustrate this. Let's imagine for a second that we're dashing forward on a ground with no slope. The roll direction and the normal vector are perpendicular to each other. If the slope of the ground changes now, you might be tempted to think that the axis we have to use to rotate the roll direction vector is the one Unreal Engine calls right vector. And this is true only for this specific scenario. The reason for this is that in this case, both the normal and the forward direction are contained in a plane that is perpendicular to the right vector. But if the roll direction changes, that is no longer true. The key concept is that we have to rotate the roll direction about an axis that is perpendicular to both the normal and the roll direction. Hopefully that made sense. Let's move on. By far the easiest way to calculate a vector perpendicular to two given vectors is by using the cross product. So back in Unreal Engine, we're going to do the cross product of the roll direction and the normal vector. And this is exactly the axis we need to rotate the roll direction vector about. So now all that's left to do is to rotate this vector. Finally, we'll replace the original roll direction vector with the new one we just calculated. With that, we are done. If you notice that the velocity is still inconsistent, you might have the cross product backwards. So interchange the normal and the roll direction and try again. That should fix it. Now as a final note, you'll notice that the roll doesn't work properly on these stairs. The reason for that is these stairs have complex collision. In other words, the collision is accurate for each step of the stairs. I'd say the simplest solution is to replace this complex collision for a simple slope. That way you'll even get better frame rate. So 
why not do it? Alright, so hopefully everything made sense and you found useful information in this tutorial. If you did, you already know the drill. Like the video, subscribe, yada yada yada. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next one.